a Harley Davidson really lying about how hot their engines get? Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf. So this is kind of a, a reaction video to a video which I saw the other day where uh, it was implied that Harley-Davidson, the motor company, are lying to you and I, uh, saying that uh, how hot their engines get, or they really get, and what they deem as acceptable, or certainly what dealerships deem acceptable. So in the service manual, it does actually say that the normal operating temperature at a given oil pressure is 230 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 110 degrees Celsius. Now, is that a realistic figure for an air-cooled engine? Now, some engines run a little bit hotter and some engines run a little bit cooler. So that's not really the issue per se. It's the figure that is quoted. So the real question is, are Harley-Davidson lying to you and I as what a normal operating temperature is? So the other day I washed the bike and I wanted to see how long it would take for it to reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and that's when you do a hot oil check. And basically as I rode around uh, it took about 10 minutes not even that so on a really hot day you're going to achieve that a lot quicker you would imagine on a really cold day possibly a little bit longer but let's say 10 to 15 minutes and that's pretty much where I would always imagine it to be anyway. So then whilst I was riding to the supermarket, as I was going to buy some toys for the uh, the local toy run here, my temperature went up to 111 degrees Celsius, which is uh, 231.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So for that, it was bang on the money. So that is just me cruising around and no real issues at all. So the next day, I actually went on the toy run. And you can imagine, although it was a cold day, it was about 4 degrees, the previous day was 7 degrees. I was doing a lot of parade riding, a lot of slow riding, caught in traffic. And on most of the route, I was just operating about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Towards the end, I peaked at about uh, 260. And then right at the end, just as I was in slow moving traffic again and waiting to park up, uh, I reached a maximum of 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, of course, this is in quite cold temperatures here. So you can imagine if you're in the middle of summer, really hot temperatures, uh, you might exceed over 300, 320, let's say. So the question is, is this normal? Well, whilst they quote 230 degrees Fahrenheit, 110 degrees Celsius, as a normal oil temperature, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the only figure that they will accept. In fact, you would imagine that they would have built in a tolerance so that they can exceed those temperatures. So let's just say you're running at 240, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, it's running slightly hotter than their quoted figure of 230. And yes, if an engine is running cooler, that's going to be better all around for your efficiency. But it doesn't necessarily mean that there's any harm being done. Now, if you do some research, you'll find there's lots of figures banded about 230, 250, 260, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are considerably more than the 230 quoted by Harley Davidson. But their bikes actually run a lot hotter than that anyway. But is this acceptable? Is this acceptable for them, Harley Davidson, and is it acceptable for you? Now, the question implied was whether Harley-Davidson are lying to you. And personally, I don't think they are. You've got to factor in what an air-cooled engine is. It's going to run hotter, not necessarily because the engine generates more heat. It's just the way that heat is dissipated. Via air, it's uh, less conductive than via liquid, either by oil or coolant in a liquid-cooled engine. Now, personally, I cannot see how any manufacturer can quote a normal operating temperature of 230 degrees Fahrenheit and be so concerned whether that temperature exceeds that momentarily or in certain conditions. However, Harley-Davidson have addressed this with their EITMS system. Now, the EITMS is basically the system that shuts down your rear cylinder on your Harley-Davidson and allows it to act as an air pump so that in slow-moving traffic or stationary traffic on hot days, uh, you are going to get a, a cooler running rear cylinder. In fact, that activates at 287 degrees Fahrenheit or 165 degrees Celsius. Now it deactivates at 275 degrees Fahrenheit or 135 degrees Celsius. Now this wasn't mentioned in the video at all. In fact, there's, there's no mention that Harley Davidson accept, acknowledge that the engines are gonna be running hotter 
Hence why they have this EITMS uh, system in place. Now, I have quite a few questions here as to why some engines will be running hotter than others. And this wasn't even addressed in the video as well. So we've got to consider uh, how the engine is running and what accessories it's got on it that will make it run hot or cold. Does it have a tuner on there? What kind of exhaust has it got? Uh, what kind of air filter has it got on there? And also, what is the fuel air mixture? Is it running lean? Is it running rich? Also, what is the oil level? And also, what is the type of oil being used? There are lots of variables here that will make an engine run cooler or run hotter. Now, of course, there is a sub-industry out there that is trying to sell products, and they're good products. Yes, bigger oil coolers, extra oil coolers, uh, cylinder fans that will aid in cooling. But essentially, you've got to ask yourself, do you really need those, or are they just an added benefit? So, the manufacturers of air-cooled engines on motorcycles or in cars back in the day, would they acknowledge that uh, their engines would get hotter uh, or quite hot uh, at certain times uh, during their operating uh, profile, let's say? Well, yes, they would. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad engine. It's just, obviously, just the design of the engine. Do we have to necessarily stick to a quoted figure of 230 degrees Fahrenheit in a service manual? And it's not really hidden away. It's actually in plain sight. Now, where I think Harley-Davidson have kind of made an error here is that they've just given a single figure. Perhaps they should have given a range 230 to 300, let's say, or 230 to 280, and then from 280 to 320, that would be, let's say, a caution range. Now, I think we can accept that that would be quite a sensible uh, option here. Then it will be up to you to see how hot your engine is running and whether you want to go on a ride that's a slow ride, you're going to be caught up in a lot of traffic, or whether you just want to delay it for a few hours when you can ride on the open road. Now also this may change the type of oil and the quantity of oil that you put in your engine. This also may change the uh, fuel map that you've got, whether you're running rich, whether you're running lean, and also what accessories you've got on it as well. And also how you're riding your bike. The last question I would ask is how many engines from Harley-Davidson are failing due to running higher temperatures? In fact, most people I would imagine riding a Harley-Davidson are not really paying that much attention or that close attention to how hot their engine is getting. Yes, anecdotally, yes, they might feel the heat uh, off the engine as they're riding around. They might feel it off the primary when on their lower leg, lower left leg, that kind of thing but are they taking actual note of the temperature? When I arrived at my destination for the, the toy run, yes, my bike was running at 291 degrees Fahrenheit. And yes, as it should do, the EITMS kicked in. So I could hear that the engine was running a bit hot and there was a system in place to shut down that rear cylinder to aid in its cooling. So whilst it might be a common thing for these engines to get hotter than the nominated 230 degrees Fahrenheit in the service manual, I don't necessarily believe that it's a lie. In fact, I'm gonna come down on the side of Harley Davidson, the manufacturer here. I actually don't think there's a real issue per se in that there is a tolerance that they've allowed, there is a tolerance that is acceptable. As long as it's not prolonged, as long as it's not excessive, and we're talking over 320, 350 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, let's say, then I think you're okay. I don't think there's a real need here to be so concerned. Now, does that mean that you want to run at those temperatures? <laughs> Absolutely not. You try and get your engine temperature as cool as possible, but not too cool, of course, because that oil needs to operate at a certain temperature for it to be effective as well too cool, it's too viscous, too hot, it's not viscous enough. In other words, too thick or too runny. Either end of the spectrum, it's not really providing uh, adequate cooling uh, within the engine itself. Perhaps Harley-Davidson as a company could acknowledge that their engines run hotter and maybe they would adjust the service manager in the future to quote a range of temperatures rather than a single definitive temperature that is 230 degrees Fahrenheit. But personally, I just don't think they're lying to us. I don't think there is some kind of hidden agenda here and I don't think that you have to be so concerned about it. However, taking precautions, especially if you're riding in really hot temperatures and you're doing a lot of slow riding 
riding. Now, most people, even when they're riding in really hot temperatures, they might be on the highway, so actually the temperatures kept in check. It's only when you're slow riding or parade riding on a toy run or something like that, and then all of a sudden your engine temperature might get high and that's what you got the EITMS on the more modern bikes I should say from Harley Davidson and that will shut down the rear cylinder to help with that cooling as well anyway this is my opinion I'm not trying to dig out the uh, other YouTube channel at all I'm really just uh, just concerned possibly that there was uh, an overemphasis on the the company lying to you and I about the, how hot their engines get or whether most notably whether the hot temperatures or the high hot temperatures are a real issue. I personally don't think they're a real issue to be concerned with as long as they're kept in check. Anyway, over to you. Let us know your thoughts and, uh, well, on to the next video. And I'll catch you again. Ta-da. Revelator L.